Did a recent SpaceX Starlink FCC filing reveal 15,000 new DTC satellites? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again being here. Today is going to be a DTC day. We talk all kinds of good tech on this channel. We talk about space, SpaceX, Starlink, AI, a little bit of Linux, all kinds of good stuff. Today is a DTC continuation, let's say. I got so many questions about this and there's been a lot of articles written about this and I'm telling you, these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's just it. I don't know how else to say it. I'm being nice about it. I can get a little bit more nasty, but I'm not going to. They just don't know. I don't know. They read these filings, the PDFs, and they just don't have enough sense to be able to put two and two together and it doesn't equal three or five, right? I just, I don't get it, but we're going to go through some of these articles. I'm going to read some of this for you, and then I'm going to tell you the truth behind it. What's going on? and how what they're saying is just absolutely fictitious. So there's a lot to unpack today, but before we jump head first into it, I just wanna say that if you enjoy the channel or if you enjoy the video, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click the notification button here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, Thanks button right down here. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And when you're done watching this video, not yet, I'll put a link over here to about 560 more videos just on SpaceX Starlink, all right? So if you're here for SpaceX Starlink or anything spacey, that's where you wanna go. Once again, when you're done watching this video, don't click on it yet. And finally, if you haven't went over to my website, jchristina.com, check it out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Matter of fact, you can take a look at all of my merch. If there's something there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. So let's get right into this. The article starts out by saying SpaceX Starlink's bold plan, 15,000 new satellites to close the signal gaps. SpaceX has filed with the FCC to deploy up to 15,000 additional SpaceX Starlink satellites aimed at expanding its direct-to-sell service so that ordinary smartphones can connect via satellite without needing specialty gear. Well, that's kind of half true. We'll get into that in just a minute. You can connect with any modern phone, let's just call it. Modern phone, 4G, 5G type of thing, you'll be able to connect with your phone, which is really kind of cool if you think about it. The move follows SpaceX's acquisition of wireless spectrum from EchoStar in a deal worth about $17 billion. $17 billion, guys. That breaks down to about, I think it's about $8.5 billion in shares, $8.5 billion in cash. That's 17. But then I think there's an extra $2 billion that they're taking on, let's just call it debt. <laughs> So it's a big deal, guys. It's a big deal, no matter how you look at it, for this spectrum. But SpaceX now and Starlink has their own spectrum. They don't need to borrow it. Because remember, right now, they're kind of borrowing it from T-Mobile, right? Anyways, it continues. Why the spectrum deal matters. SpaceX didn't just get permission, it bought the raw materials it needs. The Echo Star deal hands over key spectrum licenses, including mid-band airwaves that are vital for balancing range and speed. This gives SpaceX Starlink more control over how, where, and when it provides service instead of depending on leasing from other spectrum holders. Like I said, T-Mobile. Real test. Real locations. It isn't speculation. Ukraine Kiev Star operator ran one of the first field tests of direct to sell service in Eastern Europe, using standard 4G phones to send messages via SpaceX Starlink satellites in a rural region. No special hardware required. That test is expected to lead to a commercial rollout of messaging service by Q4 2025. Meanwhile, the information reports that SpaceX plans to bring trials of the new service on the acquired Echo Star Spectrum sometime next year. That's very important, guys. Remember I did a video about this a couple of videos ago, and I talked about them creating a chip with Qualcomm, some other companies. That chip is designed to be able to communicate from phone to that new spectrum that will be on those satellites. Very, very important. They're saying by sometime next year. So they're expecting 
the new phones coming out to have the new chip in it. They're not only expecting it, they're betting on it. Anyways, it continues. Regulatory shifts and FCC moves. The FCC has been investigating EchoStar for failing to deploy 5G service quickly enough and under using its licensed spectrum. This has been a big deal and this lawsuit has been going on for at least a couple of years now. It's crazy. With the spectrum sale, many of those concerned are supposed to be resolved. The FCC has formally ended its probe into EchoStar's 5G obligation after EchoStar SpaceX's $17 billion deal. So of course, now Elon Musk owns that spectrum and they can't investigate EchoStar anymore because EchoStar is like, what are you talking about? I sold it. And that's it. Challenges in orbit and science concerns. Sending 15,000 more satellites raises the risk of orbital congestion, collision, and interference. Astronomers are already sounding the alarms over unintended emissions from existing SpaceX Starlink satellites in frequencies used for radio science. These emissions can distort or interfere with sensitive instruments, potentially impacting scientific research that rely on weak astronomical signals. Regulators will be watching closely. Studies have detected unintended emissions from SpaceX Starlink satellites in protected radio frequency bands used for astronomical observations. Well, this has definitely been the case. There has been some bleeding and uh, I know that SpaceX has been trying to address any of those bleeds, but it's not as bad as it sounds, let's just say. What happens next? SpaceX still needs FCC approval for the satellite deployment plan. After that, it's a matter of manufacturing, orbital launches, and working out partnerships with carriers and governments. Industry watchers expect to see incremental rollouts beginning perhaps in 2026, scaling towards more widespread availability by 2027 as infrastructure and regulatory permissions come together. So. This sounds great. And when you take this for face value, you think, oh my God, they have filed, they being Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink has filed for 15,000 new DTC satellites. This is going to be massive. Joe just told me just a couple of videos ago that DTC is going to be taken over and Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink is going to be like the fourth carrier. What's going to happen when there's like 15,000 more satellites? Listen, guys, these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. And when they read the PDF, the actual filing, they just don't understand it. They don't understand it. They can't see the forest from the trees, let's just say. All right. They don't understand some of the terminology. What exactly is a next gen satellite and a version three satellite? Are these DTC? Are they not? They don't really know. So. Let's just do this logically, all right? Let's just do this logically. Currently, there is 655 DTC satellites on orbit. There is 7,400 and I think 30, let's call it 7,400 satellites that are the actual version two, version 1.5 and version ones. So the actual internet satellites in comparison to DTC, which is the direct to sell satellites, the ones that communicate with this. So let's call it, let's write it off to 10%, right? So you got, let's say 7,000, you have close to 700 of the DTC. So if their logic was correct, which is absolutely not, if they were to put on orbit another 15,000 DTC satellites, and that would be 10%, that means that there'd be a totality of 150,000 SpaceX Starlink satellites. And we know that Elon Musk over the years has said, we're looking for about 42 to 43,000 in totality. So where's the math? They just, and this is the kind of stuff that happens, right? But that's what I'm here for. Right? So the bottom line here is, yes, there's 15,000 more satellites that they are requesting to put on orbit from the FCC. But if they're not DTC satellites. Probably 10% of them are, you know? So if it is 15,000, 10% of that would be 1,500. When they put 15,000 more up there, there'll be 1,500 more. So let's just call it 650 plus the 1,500. Let's call it, let's say 2,100, 2,150 in totality. That's still a ton. 
That is a lot, guys. It is a lot. Now, is it the 15,000? It's 2,100. It's not 15,000, but still 2,100. Think about this. 2,100 satellites that have e-node Bs built into it. An e-node B is basically the modem that converts one of these satellites into a cell tower. And instead of at like 540 kilometers, they're sitting at like 300 and some kilometers, 320, 330, right around there. So they're closer. So you get lower latency, you get faster speeds. Their end of life is probably sooner because there's a lot more atmospheric drag. We don't have to get into all that. So the bottom line here is, yes, the FCC did receive a filing for an additional 15,000 satellites, next generation version three satellites. Those are the satellites that the Starship will be placing on orbit. And some of those will be DTC. That's what they don't talk about here. Now, what is the difference between these version three, or as they call them sometimes, next generation satellites? Well, the capacity. The downlink is like a terabit, and the uplink is like 160 gigabits. It's just a ton. It is absolutely a ton. These things are massive. There is additional beam forming going on. They are the equivalent to like 10 or 15 of the current satellites that are on orbit. So for every one, figure about 10 to 15. Let's just use 10 as a number. So if they launch 100 of the new satellites is the equivalent to what? A thousand of the old, maybe 1,500, somewhere on there, okay? So it's a big deal. So when we see 15,000 of these new ones, you can do the math. It is massive. It is absolutely massive. And once we see 2,100 more of the DTC satellites, remember, there's only 655 currently on orbit as of today. It's going to be a big deal, guys, a big deal. And like I said in a past video, I do believe that they will become the fourth global wireless carrier. But when I say wireless, it is wireless, but it's from space, non-terrestrial in comparison to a terrestrial carrier. Remember, NTN, guys, non-terrestrial network. Remember that term, NTN. You're going to hear it a lot in the next year or two. You have 3G, 4G. 5G, LTE, and then what? I just said it, NTN. <laughs> You're going to be hearing a lot about that. And that's going to have to do with this new spectrum. And I really do believe that the FCC will give them permission to launch 15,000. And in the article where they talk about possible collisions and all the rest of this stuff, that's not going to happen. And when you see images of the globe and you see all these dots orbiting the globe, it looks like there's so many of them. Well, if you were really to take a mathematical point as a reference around a globe, let's say this big, the point would be so small that it would be microscopic, you wouldn't be able to see it. So when you see 8,000 satellites orbiting a globe, let's say this big, those satellites would be like the size of a town <laughs> in proportion because they can't do it properly. You know, If not, you wouldn't be able to see it. That's how vast space is. So the collision factor is really not that big of a deal. Now, is there a lot of modifications and movements happening every day with these satellites? Absolutely, because they're constantly having to adjust position. That's why they have the propulsion systems on board. And those propulsion systems usually last about three to five years. And then what happens is atmospheric drag happens and gravity and it pulls them back in and they burn up. And you see like a little light show for a second. And that's the end of them. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting. And like I said, just simply using logic instead of listening to these people will always give you the true answer to anything. Math doesn't lie. Physics doesn't lie. It kind of is what it is. When you do the math and you use logic, you can see that they just don't know what the hell they're talking about for the most part. And hopefully this helps you to get a grasp of what's going on. Is it good? Yes. Is it as good as what they say? No. Because once again, we're going to see about 2,100 plus DTC satellites on orbit. Once this all comes to pass, we're not going to see 15,000. All right. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the content, like I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to head over to my website, jcristina.com forward slash shop. Check out my merch. I would appreciate that. Finally, 
Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink and DTC. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.